Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to paint a blue poppy, and this is kind of a funny, uh, <laughs> funny little uh, project because I'm like, I'm just going to do a very quick and easy watercolor card. We haven't done one of those for a while. I just want to have something kind of fun and loose. And I came up with this and I was like, uh, I really don't like the way this looks. Ugh, try again. So then I came up with this and I actually really liked painting it. I had a good time. I recorded it and then I went to play it back and I had it like off the frame like that for like half the video. So I was like, oh, well, third time's a charm. We're going to try it again. And hopefully I could take the things that I like the best about these first two um, examples and put it in the third. And I also really wanted to do this because I've had a lot of people asking me about these Jane Davenport Aqua Pastels and uh, the new watercolor palette. So it would just give me a chance to um, kind of show it in action. So the first thing I'm going to do is just grab a uh, water bottle and just, I want to spritz it. I'm, I'm doing that instead of... Um, instead of using just a brush to wet the background just so i get more of a random a random look and i'm gonna make sure i don't stick that way up there i've moved my um my camera holder so that i have a little bit um a little bit is so i don't have to reach so much when i'm working but i haven't kind of gotten used to filming that way so i'm putting some yellow in here onto this wet background and remember it's ununiformly wet so um I'm just turning my palette around the way I usually use it, uh, just so I can get some interesting blends. I don't want everything to be really smooth. I want there to be kind of like chunks of color here and there. This color is kind of like a olive brownish green. It's called Water Sprite. There are um, five greens in this palette, which is quite a bit. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that this is the Sea Glitz palette from Jane Davenport. And uh, a neat thing about all of like the Jane Davenport palettes and also the Prima palettes, there's enough room to put about seven half pans down the center. And so what I do is like if I have a, a, um, like a watercolor set that like I don't like the palette that the pans came in I'll, I'll take those and I'll like see what a set needs to make it more versatile and that's what I will put in the middle of these palettes so that way if I'm going like to a friend's house to paint or I'm gonna go um like on vacation I don't have to take a bunch of palettes I'm just gonna take one with a variety of colors that I can mix all sorts of other things from so I know that I want a blue flower, so I'm kind of just adding this blue in here. The more water you have, I find these, these paints granulate quite a bit, and it could be because they're uh, more of a craft quality and they have fillers in them, but they do give you a beautiful granulation. And I'm going to kind of make the most of that, that ability by really flooding the paper. So the more water you have, if your paints want to granulate, they're going to granulate more. And I also like to get a little bit of earthiness in here, so... I think this uh, this is kind of like a little bit of a bronze. It's got a little metallic to it, not a ton, but um, I kind of like it because it's just kind of warm and um, it just gives me a nice bit of, um, of character. So in this area right here where it's a little bit lighter, what I'm gonna do is do my lighter color and I am gonna lift out a little bit of that blue. These colors lift really well um, and I think that's because they are, um, they are kind of a craft quality. They're going to be they granulate. Granulating colors lift more. I'm going to go in there with just a little bit of green, just enough to kind of mark off that area. And then I'm going to go around it with some yellow. And one thing I, I, I really like about these crayons, they're um, very pigmented. They work really well on wet paper. And the thing I like about these is sketching on wet paper. So that would be the first thing I would try if I were you and you are new to this, um, this product. So I've got this uh, blue, this is called Botticelli, and it's almost like a bottle blue actually. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of sketch some ruffly petals because I want to have kind of like a really fun, loose, uh, really um, expressive flower here. So I'm just kind of going around, I'm twisting my crayon as I go because I think that kind of helps me get that, um, get that look that I'm after. I can put some of the veins in. Now things are gonna smoosh out and get a little um, fuzzy because I'm working on wet paper, but that's part of what I really like about this um, this process and this product. And um, and it's, you know, kind of so far my favorite way to use these. Now I haven't spent a lot of time working on, working with these, but, um, but this is, I think, my favorite way to use them. And then I can go around and fill in. And every time I do this, these flowers, I make them bigger. <laughs> I don't know if you do if you do that you like get more comfortable it's like yeah I'm gonna make this bigger now 
and I can go in and add a little bit of shading, a little bit of veining, and just keep in mind that we're working with watercolor. It's going to do what it wants to do. It's a rebel, right? It's not going to just do our bidding. We're going to we're going to suggest where we would like things to go, and it's going to do whatever it darn well pleases. And that's why I love watercolor. It's a rebel after my own heart. Um, and we're going to put a few little um, buds, poppy buds that kind of look like snakes. <laughs> They've got that uh, kind of diamond, like rounded diamond shape. Get one up here, and I'm doing this in such a light green that if I make an error and I don't like it, it can just turn into the background. Now, if you do decide you want to sharpen your crayons, they're all pigment, right? So you just peel back your um, peel back your wrapper and then save them, like in a pill case or an empty watercolor palette or something, so that you don't waste that beautiful yummy pigment. And I'm going to go in with a darker green and add a little bit more definition to the buds and stems. Now, uh, a lot of you guys are probably wondering how do these compare to Caran d'Ache. Caran d'Ache are more opaque and they are softer and they are waxier. So like I like to use my Caran d'Ache watercolor crayons on colored matte board because they really show up. If you use these on colored matte board, they really wouldn't show up that well. Um, but if you use these as an underpainting and went over with your Caran d'Ache, you'd get a really nice, um, you'd get a really nice effect. Uh, so these are more like a watercolor pencil, um, a woodless watercolor pencil, I would say, more so than a watercolor crayon. They're, they're a little softer than a watercolor pencil, so not exactly, but they almost remind me of the old Derwin Aquatones that are discontinued that I really loved, so that that's kind of nice. I'm adding a little bit of this reddish brown in here. This color is called Gauguin. Because I found the yellow on its own next to the blue just is missing something. And this will give it a little bit of an orange tint, so I think it will really make that blue pop a little bit more. Now, a word about blooms. And I'm going to see if I have any blooms on either of these, because I'm going to show you how to keep them or how to avoid them. Now, I, I did blot up most of my water puddles, so I don't really have a lot of blooms. I have a little bit of one there. But, um, so these areas where we have puddles, if I leave those alone, I'm going to have some really interesting little um, ruffly edges. If you don't like that, what you can do is take a brush and dry it off really well, and just lay it in the color, lay it in that puddle, and blot it up, and that's going to that's going to give that more of a flat. It's going to dry a little more flat. Now I'll leave that one just so you can see. So when we um, when we go back after it's dry, you're going to see a jagged edge. So I'll I'll leave that one there for your so you can see. I'm going to keep on working wet into wet because I think that it's kind of fun, and I think a lot of times people are afraid to do it, and. I think you should at least try it once. If it's not your cup of tea, that's fine. But try it and see what happens, because I think you might be um, kind of surprised at the effects that you can get. In fact, I think I can zoom in a little bit more, and then you can see a little bit more detail as I am working. And I'm just going to blend out a little bit there with my soft brush. Another thing I wanted to show you, because I've had some people asking about it, is this brush here. Now, there, I have a warning on this brush. So this is the little uh, travel brush. So to open it, you just simply pull the two things apart and to close it, you push them together. The thing I want to warn you about this is it will trap water in the barrel. It's hollow in there so that the, the br bristles can retract. And I kept wondering why I was getting um, why I was getting water dripping. And it's because it was in the barrel. Now my furnace just went on. I'm going to pause the video and come back in a second and continue on the tutorial. Okay, so to continue on, so what I basically would say is that if you're going to use this brush, don't dunk it too far deep into the water or water's going to get into the barrel and you're going to have, have drops of water on your picture. Um, I prefer a juicier brush anyway, but this is really cute. It does fit into the container, so I know it's going to be popular. I just want to make sure that, you know, you kind of are aware of that so you don't end up with, with water dripping on your picture where you don't want it. So what I'm going to do here is use some of the watercolors to work in with our painting here and also um, I want to take that blue crayon that I have ah it's right here sorry it's in the wrong spot um, I am going to scribble it out onto my palette so I have a little bit of um, color to work with now the thing that I did find out about these is that putting a wet brush to the tip of the stick it doesn't want to release the pigment as well that way but it will release it really well that way I'm not sure why that is but um, but that's just something that I found um, so for my darkest colors um, and I do like to go in with my darks fairly off the bat I'm using this color here called Nerid and I'm all which is kind of like a Prussian blue I would swear it's Prussian blue and I'm, I am going to use a little bit of the C nymph which is more of like a, um, a cobalt tone and I am going to go in 
and kind of add it into my darker areas and the paper is still quite wet so I am not like looking for really crisp details here I mean if your paper dried on you while you were doing this it's would it wouldn't look bad I'm just really just letting it do what it wants to do the paper I'm working on is a Strathmore watercolor card they're very inexpensive and what I do is I pick them up in a bulk pack of a hundred and I will link that below in case you're looking for them you also come in packs of like 30 or 50 I think I got my veining a little bit wrong here so I'm just gonna smudge it out if they you want the the veinings to be going towards the center and I kind of got confused with that edge there and I had them had it a little off so I'm gonna let that water settle in I also want to curve this a little bit more I think I feel like I had some pointy edges and I want more um, fluid curvy edges there Anytime you have a really big dip like that, you could actually make that an overturned petal just kind of by connecting the dots with a curve. So if you have two like really curvy uh, spikes, you can just kind of connect them. I hope that makes sense. And I'm just kind of picking some of the petals apart, figuring out what's going to be a, uh, a back petal and what's going to be a front petal if there's, if there's both. Sometimes there isn't because there's not room. And uh, it's so funny, I've been closed captioning my videos and every time I say the word room, like, do we have enough room for this? Or I'm going to go into my, you know, uh, I'm going to put a shelf in my room. It comes up as rum, like, you know, rum that you would drink. So, and there was that one video I was closed captioning this morning. It said, I'm going to need a lot of room for this. <laughs> and I came across like, I'm going to need a lot of rum for this. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, everybody <laughs> must think I'm an alcoholic. Because I'm like, always talking about rum and how much I need for every project. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I thought that was very funny. But uh, I know alcoholism is not a laughing matter. I just thought the closed captioning was funny. So please don't don't jump down my throat on that. I don't want to record this video a fourth time. My goodness gracious, <laughs> four full times I've recorded this. I decided I would let the, the furnace noise uh, slide. <laughs> this one's going to be demonetized, probably. Oh boy. So yeah, I'm just going in and throwing in some of the veining and um, you can always go in with like a, a cut a piece of credit card and scrape it in too because the paper is really wet still because we really soaked it uh, and that would give you a crisp line that would not dissolve, would not fade at all when you are, um, you know, when you're working. So there's lots of different ways to get these details depending on what you prefer. And I really like the tone from the crayon the best, so I'm gonna look how pretty that is. It's almost like um, it looks like a bottle blue, doesn't it? It's just like a that pretty. It's such a pretty, almost like sea glassy color. And I'm gonna throw some of that in here and there. And you could kind of see stuff kind of like fading out where from the water because the paper's so wet. So when you want detail to stay and you want really you want really bright like in crisp lines you want to let the uh, the paper dry underneath but i just think this is really kind of fun to get these lost and found edges and that i think i want that one i think i want that one to be lighter but i do like that color from the stick there i'll try i'll show you what i mean about trying to pick this up off the tip um We'll see if we can get that to, I mean, it picks up a little bit, but it's not bad. It's not quite as good as like putting it on your palette though. I think it does help though, the more you use it because you kind of wear down the, like a, any dried film on it. All right, now we're gonna let that kind of be a little bit um, and work on the, um, work on the bottom here. I don't know if I want to put any leaves in it. It gets really, maybe just some sketchy leaves. It get, can get really messy and really a little too loose very quickly. I want a little bit of yellow in there. Oh, I might not get a good, a good bloom there because my paint is still moving. But I think I'm going to dry it in just a second anyway, just to get, um, just so I can move on and do a little bit of detail on the flower. I don't want to do a ton, but I do want a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to dry this and pause the video and we'll come back when that's dry and finish it up. 
Okay, um, and so you can see a bloom there. That's where like a water drop had landed on there. Um, and you see these kind of like spidery edges. And that one, you can just see a little bit of a ruffle there. I did end up blotting it though. It was taking a long time to dry. So, um, so you know, just so you know, you can play with how much water you leave for the blooms that you want. So now I am at, I'm actually going in a little bit with a crayon to kind of redefine some of these lines because I do love that color that's on there and then I will refine it with my brush and whew, using a little bit of a little bit of line work there so just also keep in mind when you're heating, if you're if you're heat drying, your blooms won't be as strong anyway. And also careful with the heat tool around this because I can feel like it got softer <laughs> just because it was near where I was using the heat gun. So uh, you want to be aware of that so you don't end up um, melting your your crayons. So you know don't leave them in a hot car and that sort of thing. I actually think I will try this little brush, but I'm going to be careful just to dip the tip of that in the water because I don't want to get a bunch of water up in the barrel and I tend to just like really uh, you know dunk my brushes in and you know whip them around in there so it's kind of a hard habit for me to break so even though the brush the bristles don't hold a lot of water the barrel will if you um, if you dip it too too far in the water so you might want to have like a little bottle cap or something uh, just to to dip from if you're taking this out with you traveling you generally don't travel with as much water as you would use at home anyway but I just wanted to make you aware of that because that could be a bummer if you're almost done a painting and then you you end up you know going in to put a final detail in and, and a big load of water comes out of your brush So it's really cute um, and it's useful if you're just doing a small area but I definitely prefer to use uh, to use a juicier brush myself that will uh, carry a little bit more paint and water in the bristles and I mean it's always a, a challenge with a Taclon brush that hasn't been like you know designed to act like a a fur brush like the Mimics because the the water just wants to slip right off of the bristles so it, it doesn't like hold the paint and water and release it slowly like a um, like a animal hairbrush or like a brush that's designed to behave like an animal hairbrush does so it's just you know just kind of getting used to that for me anyway I mean maybe if you're not already used to that type of brush it wouldn't even bother you and just kind of eh, you know puttering around Ironically, I think this one's taking me longer than the other ones. <laughs> All right, and then maybe just a little bit of, um, oh my goodness, my brush was just sliding on me. Grab some of that earthy, uh, I do like that earthy green because it's still pretty transparent. A lot of times you get an earthy, the earthy colors are really opaque and I don't like opaque. There's a color that I need, I've talked about before there's there's a color I'm not very fond of it's called chrome uh, oxide of chromium green and um, it's just such an opaque um, baby poo color it's awful and um, and I know other people like it so I don't want to I don't want to you know poop on anyone's party but um, but it is like it is a really difficult color to work with because it just makes everything muddy and uh, and it's yucky. This one's actually, this color here is actually pretty transparent for an earthy green. So that's kind of nice. But I do feel like it helps being mixed in with one of its neighborly greens on the set, on the, uh, in the paint set, because then you get a much, you know, much nicer, uh, more vivid, more lively color. So if you like green, this is a set for you because there's lots of green in there. <laughs> but I'm going to throw a few extra pans down the center so that I can uh, so that I can make it a little bit more useful for the way I like to work when I'm painting out about I'm gonna grab a little bit of this because it's got that little bit of glitzy metallic in there can you even look at that see I'm having a real hard time keeping things in in uh, focus today I had this big long to-do list and I gotta tell you today I've got like maybe one and a half things done on it ah, it's awful 
but I think this is pretty much going to do it. I hear the school bus pulling up out front. I'm going to call this a day. I'm pretty happy with this. This is how it looks when it's dry pretty much. I hope you enjoyed this. If so, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions on these crayons or watercolors or whatever, uh, let me know in the comments below. There is a very in-depth review of her watercolors on my channel. It's the first two sets, but they're the same paints, just different colors. So check that out if you're interested. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.